congratulations on the film. Thank um, you. This is a film that's obviously been in development for you know a, a few years. Uh, you know we've known about Tom Hanks's involvement for a few years as well. So how did your involvement in the project begin? Uh, you know, I originally read the book and fell in love with the book, and, and so it was fantastic. And then I saw the movie, and then um, I I know that Tom and Rita wanted to option it, and uh, SF Studio, Freddie Wick Wickstrom, the, the other producer, uh, met with them, and I met with him before on another project, and and they brought they discussed me and David McGee, who wrote the screenplay and worked on Finding Neverland together. So they thought it would be a, a good combination. So we all met four years ago in, in Tom's office in Santa Monica and, and basically just discussed this. And uh, and that's how it all came about. So we, we slowly developed it. David wrote a first great draft and and then we started shooting 10 months ago. So um, before this, you know, all materialized, how familiar were you with the novel and, and the film? Uh, I. You know, I, I, I read the novel and then I, I saw the film. I was familiar with it because there were yeah. such massive yes. hits that I was very familiar with them. Yeah. The, the novel is obviously uh, set in Sweden and written by a Swedish author. What elements of the story do you think translate well into an American setting? Uh, I, I think, you know, the, the, the great thing about Frederick, Be Frederick Beckman's book, A Man Called Ove, is that these characters are very universal. It's almost like Shakespearean, like Hamlet, you can do cross-cultural in so many different languages and countries. And I feel the same here, that you probably will have the opportunity to make many more Man Called Autos or Oves uh, in Asia or Latin America or wherever, because we all know that character. We can all relate to that character of Otto. And there's an interesting sort of tension and balance that's, that's going on in the film between Otto and uh, uh, Marisol, you know, they're, they're mm. kind of polar opposite characters. Um, what was it like developing that tension and that balance between the, the two actors? Uh, you know, uh, I, I think per personally that, uh, you know, it's the key, it's sort of the heart of the movie, the Otto and Marisol. And uh, I, once I found Mariana Trevino, who plays Marisol, I felt this this is it. And because it's so incredible how she, you know, English second language, her comedic timing, and her, and her character is so persistent to crack Otto's heart open, which is really, as much of the comedy comes between the two of them, and it's really the glue of the movie. So uh, uh, once I found Marianne, I was very, very, very happy. And because that's, you, you need that, otherwise the movie wouldn't work. And, and similarly, there's a balance between, you know, the pathos and the kind of dark comedy mm -hmm. uh, in the film. Um, you know how important how, how did how how did that come about in terms of the process yeah i mean the, you know a lot of the dark <coughs> comedies is in the original novel but it's really the silver lining in in the movie to to achieve that the darkness and the comedy that, that you both bring them together it's a lot of it in editing and sound bringing them together sometimes you know also with the, introducing the flashbacks you want to stay in present day go back and forth it i tried to make it look very easy but it was very hard to to achieve on Tom Hanks's performance, you know, audiences won't necessarily be used to or maybe even prepared to see Tom Hanks as sort of unlikable and, you know, cantankerous. What was it like kind of coaxing that kind of performance out of him and developing the, the character between the two of you? Uh, you know, the, the great thing is, you know, Tom started in comedy and drama. So here he, in A Man Called Otto, he uses both skill sets, sort of the, this, this off physical Chaplin-esque uh, com comedic uh, aspect and also the dramatic aspect. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you want to even, you know, I wanted to turn the grumpiness a little bit 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 uh, higher and and you and he just kind of does these these adjustments and they're so qu incredible because he's one of the best actors there is so anything you as a director you want he just will give you and it's it's really really extraordinary and uh, if there is one thing that you hope the audiences take away from this film what what would you kind of identify that as um I I think uh, you know for me what's what's so lovely about it is it's such a life affirming film with so much hope and you know it has the dark and the light in the film you cry and you laugh but at the end of the day it's it's a community coming together and I think that's what you know life is really about is of people caring for each other and coming together and that's how it, it becomes so life affirming and it's interesting you know because I've seen the film obviously by myself in editorial and then I've seen it with an audience. Experiencing it in the cinema with an audience is so much more satisfying because this is one of those movies you can go, go through some emotional roller coaster, which at home isn't as satisfying. Well, it's been really good to speak to you. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank for your time. you so much. Yeah, Take thank care. You. Thanks. Cheers.